Who has the first question? So John, I mean, when you won your first world title, Dominic wasn't even a professional fighter yet. So I'm just kind of curious, you know, your motivation, your excitement for fighting guys like this that, you know, you haven't seen, you, you haven't necessarily watched, that weren't at the top, and they're just getting there. Is it more difficult to, to face guys like this? No, it's not difficult to get excited. You know, Dominic starting off this whole thing with talking about party favorites and bringing up my past and stuff like that. It, I, it's, it was exactly what I wanted and what I needed. Somebody who's tall. People think I do bad against tall people, so I'm excited for this challenge. He's undefeated. Um, so, yeah, I, this guy tickles my pickle. And, uh, and, uh, and I cannot wait. Pause. I cannot wait to put my hands on him. He's an elite level athlete. I, I believe I am as well. Um, he has a lot of power and, and his left hand. Um, but to call him different than anybody I've faced before, I don't know if I can do that um, at all. I've, I've faced so many people with uh, way more advanced striking. Um, I've faced so many people with extreme knockout power. And um, I just got to go out there, respect him, believe, and, and just do what I do. I don't really care. I don't really care. Uh, at the end of the day, my job is to destroy this dude and start focusing on uh, 2020. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm like, I'm going to have a great 2020 and it's going to start off by destroying Dominic. Um, I don't know. Hey, 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 hey. Um, this guy. This guy. Um, hell of a drug, huh? <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> That's gonna follow me for a long time, huh? But uh, yeah, man, I don't know what I want to do to him, man. I, I don't know if I want to knock him out, choke him out. But oh, dude, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna get him. I promise you guys. I, I, I do feel like Dominic has everything to win in this situation. Um, you know, he's relatively unknown. Uh, but that's why I'm gonna, that's, that's why I'm training as hard as I, I can. You know, I was 240 last week, I'm 230 this week. I'm taking him extremely seriously. I watch his fights every single day. Um, and um, because he's unknown, you know, people would expect someone in my position to take him lightly. And that's where guys uh, in my position will fall. Um, you know, I'm, I'm reading a, a book called uh, Relentless right now. And uh, it talks about being a, a, a cleaner. And uh, Look, I'm trying to be a cleaner, dude. I wanna, I, wanna, I wanna dominate for years and years to come. And uh, so I gotta take him very seriously. I read that book like three years ago, so. It's a good, good book. book. It's a good book. It's a great book. I'm, I'm glad you did. I'm reading it right now on this It might've helped camp. me get here, to be honest. You know, I'm reading it right now on this training camp leading into beating your ass. <laughs> Not gonna happen. Not gonna happen, Johnny boy. Not gonna happen. Great, great response, Dominic. Is there a spy in my camp, John? You're not that important, Dominic. Well, all right, John, we'll, we'll see what happens though, man. We'll see how important I am when you're on your back though. We'll see how important I really am. I'm taking you serious, bud. I'm taking you serious, just know that. I'm taking you serious. But you're a pawn in this game, bro. I've been talking about it for a long time. Like DC, like all of them, bro. You're a pawn in this game. Say I'm a pawn? You're a pawn in this game, bro. How so? You're just a piece in the puzzle, bro. Piece I'm, in the puzzle? I'm trying, to, I'm trying to be great, bro, and you're just a part of it. You're a and small part of as it. As am I, and you're just another pawn in my puzzle. That's fine. Everyone's undefeated before they fight me, bro. You'll be, no, they're not. They're not, gonna, not though. You're gonna, they're really not, though. Trust me. You fought one undefeated guy. Trust me, bro. I, but that doesn't matter. Daniel what Cormier, does that have to do Dan, with... Daniel Cormier was undefeated. What does Daniel Cormier have to do with me? Brian Bader was undefeated. What does Brian Bader have to do with you're me? You're not special, Dominic. Oh, I'm this. I'm the one. I promise you. You're the one. You, you will beat, see. You knocked out Chris Whiteman. He's been knocked out so many times. You knocked. Not... Good job. When was the last time you knocked anyone out ever? I don't have to knock out people. I don't have to knock out people. I have a, I have a gigantic. So skill set. you say I don't have to knock out people, but no, then listen, you try to knock the, me knocking the, out the people. The only okay. way. We all know the. Okay, only, John. The only way you can possibly win this fight is is to catch me with 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 the left. We all know that. I could submit you, I could out-wrestle you, I can kickbox you to death. Bro, I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get you, Dominic. All right, we'll see. You know it. 
We'll you're see, a one Johnny. trick pony. I, I, I don't know it, actually. You're a one trick you, pony. You think you know it. Bro, we saw your highlight reel. It was straight left. Straight left. Straight left. Hey, left uppercut. Home runs work, baby. Yeah, they do. They do. At a certain level, they do. Yeah, this I, level. Good response, Dominic. I wasn't intimidated at all. It was, it was interesting in the face-off. Uh, that's the first time I ever met John in my life. Ever came face to him or even near him. And uh, we were face to face and my heart rate didn't raise at all. I was, I felt at home. I was like, this is it. This is John Jones. This, the, the lure of John Jones is a lot bigger than he actually is. It's easy to, to fall into that. You know, there's every single person is trying to tell you that, oh my God, you're fighting John Jones. Like, what are you gonna do? Like, I'm gonna fight. <laughs> I'm gonna do what I'm great at. I'm gonna do what I love doing. And that's just what I'm gonna do. People think it's a lot more. It's still, it's still a fight. It's just a fight. But everybody's like, it's John Jones. He's he's six nine. He's his wingspan's seven foot. It is, <laughs> you know. Uh, but it's it's just. Uh, do you remember the moment you were like, I don't like this guy? Like, what was it? Uh, when he mentioned party favorites and that he wanted the belt and not party favorites, I just felt like it was a very immature way to go about things. I mean, it's like you're knocking out everybody. So you are you obviously have the attention of myself in the UFC. There's no need to bring up my past. It, it, it was just a silly way, an immature way, honestly, uh, to get this thing all started off. It didn't help him get the fight. The reason why I chose to give him this opportunity was because he's knocked out everyone and he's the scariest other guy in the world that I haven't fought yet. Um, so yeah, he, he got this fight, well, he, he, he started this fight being just completely immature. And, uh, and now that I've gotten back at him, you know, I'm acknowledging that he has stinky breath. Uh, that's, that's factual. Uh, you know, you ask, ask his camp, ask his, <laughs> it's factual, ask Dana White. Um, <laughs> um, and then just calling him on his stuff, like, you know, call, you know, saying he's the best Apple Valley athlete and, and how he's considered himself the best athlete that I've ever faced. I mean, that's insulting to everyone I've ever faced. Um, what does that even mean? You know, how are we all not athletes? You know what I mean? Like, just to make the UFC roster, you have to be an extraordinary athlete. So, um, so yeah, the, the moment I realized that this guy was a little bit of a clown, uh, was was when he won his fight and he mentioned party favorites right away. It was just immature. Did you ever think you'd find yourself in a position to be calling somebody immature? No. <laughs> no, quite frankly, no. No. And I'm probably still not in a position to be calling anybody else immature, but uh, I'm a work in progress, I guess. Right. And then since the passing of Kobe Bryant and his daughter, uh, the hashtag girl dad has, was trending across uh, social media. You yourself fall into that category. So I'm curious, like, what does girl dad mean to you? Girls, stand up real quick for me. Guys, these are my daughters right here. They are super shy. You guys can sit down. And their beautiful mother, uh, Jessie, and, and my mother-in-law, Sheila. So, I, yeah, I am, a, I am a girl dad, and uh, I love it, man. They, they say that little girls go, grow up to take care of their dad forever. And, and I'm surrounded by little girls, and I know that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in good hands for the rest of my life. When I'm old and crazy, I tell them uh, they, better, they better stop by and cook me a meal uh, and check on me, make sure I got clean laundry, right? And make sure I, I got a lot of love. Uh, so uh, being a girl dad is awesome. Um, I, obviously, I want a son so bad, um, but, but uh, these girls are, are, are more than plenty. They're gonna do extraordinary things with their lives, and, uh, and I'm just excited to see the way they turn out. I'm a blessed man to have so much love around. Right? Jose Young's here at MMAfighting.com speaking with uh, no more contender, Kyle Chukagi and Juan Adams with Mirsad Beck, Derek Lewis, Dan Ige, and Miles Johnson with Alex Morono, with Lauren Murphy, Justin Taffet, Andrew Lee. You didn't make the move to Jackson Wing for this uh, this camp. Uh, how's the how's been, how's the transitions uh, been? Yes, uh, the first thing I noticed off the bat was uh, the the difference of training up there. Um, you know, normally I've I've always had like decent cardio when I'm hitting mitts and stuff. 
and up there, like after two minutes with Wink, I'm like, hey, coach, I got, I got to sit down, man. Sure. You got to give me a break. And uh, to to see that grow as uh, as time went on was was huge for me. But yeah, there were a lot of mistakes. I wouldn't even necessarily call them. Uh, they were they were mistakes. They were deficiencies in my game that I could get away with here and I could rely on, and up there, I couldn't do it, you know, because I would do them up there and I'm getting kicked in the face. Um, Because I don't spar with like only heavyweights. I spar with 85, 185ers up to heavyweights. The 185ers and 205ers will kick you in the face and it'll look like a stomach kick and then I'm getting hit in the face. So I had to, it made me correct a lot of stuff really quick. And now I don't get hit as much. I'm like, all right. Should have should have been doing this stuff a while ago. So, uh, so uh, what are some what are some other music uh, for uh, someone like myself? That's ne- this is my first time ever in Houston. Like, really wants to get the the feel for the Houston music scene. Um, probably some Pimp C. You gotta listen to some Pimp C, some Bun B, Zero, Trey, of course, um, Fat Pat, DJ Screw, Lil Flip, Lil Kiki. Um, Slim Thug, Big Pokey, Devin and Dude, of course, Devin and Dude. Yeah. <laughs> and um, Scarface too. Forgot about Scarface. That's number one, really. I assume I know the answer, but prediction: first round knockout. I would imagine against Eli Latifi on Saturday. Um, no, I'm gonna go with controversial decision win myself. Yeah. Hometown fit, hometown yeah. nod, right? The whole time judging the um, the Texas commissioner, they know what's up. Yeah. And I'll tell you, my favorite day of martial arts in my life was a. Uh, I had to be Mike Perry for Jeff Neal. And then the next couple rounds, I had to be Anthony Pettis for Carlos Diego Fiera. And just like to train with two guys who I'm friends with and training partners with and love to watch. And then to emulate the opponents that I've been watching forever was just such an awesome day and so much fun. So uh, I'm really enjoying that drive. So how's your uh, super uh, fence kick, the Anthony Pettis uh, showtime kick? You know, I actually didn't throw that, but, uh, but I was throwing some Superman punches off the wall and spinning stuff and all sorts of cool. So it was fun. I actually got to be free. Like Coach Safe was like, he was like, be free, do whatever you want with the strike and like move around because he likes me to be tight and, and, and play our game plan. So I didn't have to do that for a couple rounds, which was fun and uh, and enjoyed it. And uh, Carlos Diego Fiera just charged me down and took me down. He's a man. And it was a lot of fun. So what was e- who was easier to emulate, Mike Perry or Anthony Pettis? Honestly, Anthony Pettis. Uh, I had watched so much footage on Mike Perry. And after watching his Alex Oliveira fight, I was kind of afraid because I was like, Jeff is going to destroy me if I fight like this. And then I watched his fight against Vicente Luque. His jab count was a lot higher and it was a little bit sharper. So I was like, okay, I'm not going to get beat up so bad. But uh, but yeah, Mike was a little different just because uh, just, just because the way he fights is different. But Anthony Pettis like allowed some freedom and movement and stance changing. So I just I had like a little more comfortability doing that. Is it true that you had to, that you were offered this fight before, but you had to turn it down for the wedding? Yeah, they offered me the fight in September at Abu Dhabi, but it was on five weeks' notice, and my wedding was the day before. So I would have had to cancel my wedding on five weeks. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, I don't, I don't get paid enough to do that. And I've canceled a lot of big life, uh, big life moments and stuff for fighting, you know. When I was a kid, I didn't go to my one prom because I had a, I was fighting in the Golden Gloves. So it was just kind of like, you know, I, I'm number, I'm ranked number one. I earned my spot to get one, get a full fight camp, and not have to cancel my wedding and do all that. And you know, when I said that right away, I was like, no, I'm, I'm taking. If I have to take another fight before I get the title shot, I'll do that. That's fine. I'll just win that fight, get another payday, and then you know, have my wedding, another payday, and then get the title shot. My husband was a little bit more like, uh... I was going to say, like, was he just like, yeah, go no, for it. No, he was like, why are you so positive about this? He's like, I feel like you shouldn't turn down a title shot. And I was like, it's fine. I was like, they'll give me, they might make me have another fight. If not, whatever, I'll win that fight. We'll have a good time. And he was like, man, he's like, I think you should maybe take it. I was like, nope, this is what's going to happen. And everything worked out exactly how I thought. You know, we had our wedding, had a great time, didn't have to cancel anything. And then um, had another fight, another payday win and then now we're here shout out to you guys every branch i love you guys and i appreciate you guys hope you are enjoying the entertainment thank you for serving our beautiful nation 204 
a lot of people. Um, a lot of people say if the UFC is going to go to Africa, they're going to have to go to Morocco. Is is? Hey, right, let's go! <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so is that the move though? Like, if they are going to go to to Africa, is Morocco the most logical choice for their hey, first card? Hey man, let's do it. Yeah, we you know we got we got one of the best kings out there. So and security and everything will be safe. So let, let's do it, man. I'm. Uh, we got like what two Nigerian champs and all that. So hey man, we I know we can make some noise in the in the whole UFC records. So let's do it. Well, I feel pretty good. I've had, you know, my first UFC fight, first win, a first bonus, and now my first finish. So I, I, I'm on top of the world right now. No question. You look, I don't know, like, uh, you, you seem kind of relaxed out there tonight. I mean, it, did it feel different than, than the other fights in any way? I, I'm just getting more comfortable in the cage. You know, it's my third time. So, you know, I just felt comfortable in there. I, you know, believed in my training camp this whole time. I just, I felt good coming out there, and, um, and it showed. You teased the, the knee a couple times along the way. I mean, did you have an idea that the flying knee was going to be a part of, of your offense tonight? Absolutely, yeah. I was picturing it more him shooting and me throwing the knee, um, but he didn't take any shots, I think, because I kind of flashed him a little bit. Um, so he didn't take any shots. So, And then he stayed stationary, and I, I threw my, my scissor knee. Man, good. Uh, I really actually wanted to finish. I'm a little disappointed that it was such a close fight, to be honest with you, because I really wanted to finish... Um, what can you do, though? You know, I, I'm really proud of myself for, like, I know this sounds weird, but I'm really proud of myself for not quitting because I think that there's a lot of people, even in the UFC, that would have been in a tough fight like that, and they would have folded. And Andrea hurt me bad in the first round. She hurt me bad to the body. And I'd be lying, like, if I said that I didn't want to just sit down and quit. You know what I mean? But um, sure as shit wasn't going to quit in front of my husband and my coaches. I'm really, really happy to walk away with the win, and I know it was a close fight, and I'm really disappointed that people booed the decision, to be honest with you. I thought people would love the fight. Like, even when it was over, I was like, yes, it was a good fight, like, super jacked up. Like, and in my mind, I thought if I were a fan, I would be, like, on my feet screaming. But I don't know. I heard people booing. I don't know if that's just me picking out the negative or what, but... I mean, I hope most of the people at least liked the fight. Like, it was a tough fight, man. I don't, you know, I don't know. Oh uh, man, uh, it's it was all right. Uh, I got I got I got sloppy at the end for sure. I was trying to take his head off, um, but uh, you know, I, I don't like decisions, so I was just anything to get that knockout. Uh, dude was tough. He took some some rough shots and we made it all the way through, a, through to a decision. Usually, I'm not happy with it, but you know, hey, it's a UFC win. It's all good. It was definitely a weird situation. What, what was going through your head the first round? There were some tense moments in there, weren't there? What do you mean? In the first round, a little bit of trouble for you, weren't you? Yeah, well, oh, yeah, yeah. So when he got, yeah, he started uh, sinking the choke in. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah he, he started sinking the choke in. Um, at first, it was kind of, you know, it, it was pretty tight, but I had lost my last two fights to chokes. So I, I just, I wasn't having that today. Um, so I just, I just, I just made sure that I, I tried to stay technical. Um, and defend those chokes the right way, and, and I, I was able to get out and get that win. Not, uh, not too bad for a UFC debut, man. Is this the way you, you envision? I mean, do you see the ability to win this fast? I mean, of course, man. This, this is how I wanted it. I wanted to win in the first round by knockout. If I didn't, you know, uh, second round TKO, plan C, unanimous decision. Either way, I, I was going to get the win. You know, losing was not an option. I didn't come here to fight. I came here to win. Go back to the moment you got the call, man. What was going on? How did it happen for you to, to get this this invitation to the UFC? Man, it was a blessing. It was a blessing, man. And the timing was perfect. I, you know, guys timing. I was actually changing the headlight on the car. And uh, I got the call. My manager called me. He said, can you make the wait? It's two weeks. I said, yeah. You know, I didn't even care who I was about to fight. I was just ready. You know, when you stay ready, you don't got to get ready, so. I can knock anyone out in both hands. I don't know that, and, uh, you know, I just showed it. I knew he was coming in, he was having a good time, he changed camps, he wanted to be move, move, move. So I knew that, that kind of, as soon as he started fainting and chucking those oblique kicks, I was like, my man, that's not your style. You should have been the ball. Do you take any inspiration from guys like, Mark, guys like Mark and guys like Ty? Like, what I kind mean, of question is that? Of course, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I, wasn't, I, wasn't entirely, I wasn't entirely right there with it, but if, if the answer is yes, which it was assumed to be, like, you know, where, where, where does it come from, like, in terms of what it was that they either do or instill in you um, man, as a fighter from that region. For Mark, you know, like, man, I've never seen someone so sure of himself, you know, like, so I've seen him with broken ribs, torn calf muscle, broken nose in the one camp and still come and deliver with no hesitation in his mind that he wants to knock someone out, you know? I was like, damn. If that was me, I'd be like, oh, you know, what do you guys reckon? <laughs> so that mentality, that, that warrior mentality of Mark's, 
man, when I first come into the scene, it was Bigfoot Silver 2 and that, I couldn't believe it, man. I was just blown away. I was like, holy, this guy is a freaking war horse. And that's why I look up to him so much, behind the scenes stuff. Um, it was real special, um, especially at the end. That was nothing but the crowd. Um, they helped me do that little push at the end, and so I appreciate the um, support. I know guys, I mean, that's how they are always going to approach you, right? Trying to wrestle you, trying to keep you against the cage. I mean, how did you feel about how the fight was playing out tonight? I mean, did you think Latifi was going to be able to, to do some of those things to you tonight? Um, like at the beginning of the fight, I thought so. When he grabbed my leg, I thought I was going to go for a ride. But I was like, OK, I'm a little flexible than I thought. <laughs> so um, then I was like, I got to keep going, because it seemed like that's what was his game plan. So I, I knew I had to um, be active on the feet, because it seemed like that's what he wanted me to be on the ground. So you have uh, flexibility, high kicks, flying knees, you tried to do stuff in your arsenal. Um, I've been saying this for years. It's just that um, I couldn't do all that because I had bad back and my knee was all jacked up. And so I'm almost 100 percent. I could do all that now. So, yeah. What's, uh, what's next for you? Where do you go from here? I don't, you know, it's, it's to be honest, it's whatever the UFC gives me at this point. You know, that's five in a row. That's that's tough to do in this division. It's a, I'm in I'm in deep waters. I'm swimming with sharks, but you know I am a shark and I can hit I can hang in there with anybody. Um, I was just talking to Brett, you know, who who had liked to fight, and you know I am I'm not the call out type, but you know I've been fighting all these guys and I feel like I I go in there and I take their soul. So I want to fight a guy. You know I was saying uh, just joking. Let's make a fight with Korean Zombie. I don't think that dude has a soul. That would be a tough fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to test his, uh, you know, test his will. Mm, you know, it's, um, first of all, from the beginning of the fight, I wanted to feel her power because um, um, I heard a lot what she was saying about the distant range and I never thought someone like she and like I wanted to feel is it truth or <laughs> maybe it's just words and um, that's why it was kind of like um, yeah after I felt and after the um, last elbow in the first round when I cut it her I knew that um, it's the fight is not gonna last all five rounds, and I just trying to find the uh, like best way to finish. So during the fight, there is no thoughts. I never think about what I'm gonna do, how I have to do. I just uh, let my body act to work because I already teach it. I teach it for all these years, everything. It knows everything, and now it's time just to do the action and looks like the bo body it's know how to like finish or what to do better the scoring was all over the map so joe silva a former matchmaker here had it a draw um kevin Ioli hit me up he had jones three to two going into the last round i had uh dominic reyes three to one going into the last round uh, my kids are terrorizing me that the fix is in and how can this happen, Dad? Ray has won that fight. And the list goes on and on of people that are reaching out to me. So it's not like there's this landslide of people saying, you know, there was a robbery or whatever. People have it all over the place. But the reality is, who gives a shit? We're not judges. I am proud of myself, though. You know, I went out there and fought with all my heart. You know, a goal for me for this fight was to make it an ESPN Instant Classic. Um, and I feel like I accomplished that today. Um, man. Man. I, f I do feel disrespected, you know. Um, one of the judges had it 49-46. Like, who are you? I might want to have a word with you. Uh, <laughs> but other than that, man, I know I, I, know I won that fight. I, I know I won that fight. I was in that fight. I don't have to watch the replay. I was there. I, I made John Jones look like just a man. I, I brought the fight to him. And uh, man, this fucking man. Uh, round one went exactly how I thought it was going to go. And it was a little bit trippy. I was like, whoa, like, this is going exactly how I thought it was. <laughs> like, heck yeah. Like, it's, it's one of those things, you know, I don't have like all kinds of big coaches and all this. I don't train at a big gym, you know? I kind of just work in the dark. I kind of work just in the basement, in, in a sense. 
you know, and this is kind of this for me, this is a huge validation, you know. It's my very first time going five rounds in my entire career against John Jones, who is arguably the greatest of all time. And I put it on him, you know, I took it to him. I, I man, I feel like I'm the, the people's champ. <laughs> yeah, um, three to two or four to one. Um, it could have it could have been either of those. I, I truly believe that. I'm not even just saying that. I mean, look look at the numbers. Look at look at how the fight played out. I those takedowns. How can you even score those as a takedown? He burned more energy trying to take me down. I just popped right back up like it was nothing, and then I elbowed him off the break. So it's like you're gonna you're gonna do me like that. But it is what it is, man. All I know is I am the truth, and people are, are gonna. People, people saw that tonight, you know. I, many people from the top down in this organization have told me I won that fight. And uh, I'm so proud, I'm so proud, and I'm proud to represent, you know, my friends, my family, my culture, you know, everybody who's believed in me. You know, I, 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 shook, I shook up the world even though I didn't win in the judges' eyes. You know, you hear people say, you don't lose, you learn. And uh, I'm really grateful to have a win and such a learning experience. Um, Dominic did a tremendous job. I respect him dearly. I respect him wholeheartedly. A part of me just wanted to see, how, a part of me wanted to see how long he could keep that up. A part of me wanted to see what he had to offer. And, and I saw what he had to offer. I also saw that he couldn't keep that up. And, uh, you got to embrace that. You know, what I do for a living is is uh, not always pleasant. Um, it's just a big part of the game. It's, it was it was a great feeling out process. I realized that I got to take his best punches. I think my chin is very underrated. I feel like I took some of his cleanest shots, and uh, at no point was I wobbled. You know, I think my vision went out at, at a few points, but. You know, God has blessed me with a chin, and that's something I can't take credit for at all. Either you're born with one or you're not. And I have a great chin, so I'm grateful for that. Um, but a heart of a champion, man, that's, that's something that I don't know can be taught by a coach. Um, but I think that's also something you're born with. And I got to let that come out. I knew it was inside of me. One thing about fights like Tiago Santos and Gustafson and tonight, uh, you exercise that warrior spirit. You, you exercise that little bit of mm, uh, that a lot of people don't have, man. You know, when, when, the, when the going gets tough for a lot of people, they, they look for a way out. There's a little door. Rampage Jackson talked about it. There's a door that opens up and says, this is, this is going to be a, this is a challenge here. The easy way out, you can take this fall. You can tap out. You can let them catch you. You can pretend like that body shot hurt and curl up. And, um, I'm grateful that I got to exercise my dog tonight. Do you, do you think there will be a shared future? Do you think you'll, you'll see him again eventually? Yeah, man. A, a lot of these guys are going to be around for a very long time. Um, I don't think Dominic had any excuses for losing tonight. He lost. It was close. But they say close only counts on with handguns, uh, with, what, horseshoes and hand grenades, right? So he can try a thousand times. And I, and I believe I'll... I'll edge him every single time. Okay. Thanks, John. <laughs> I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Where's that pizza? <laughs> Ow! Love you guys.